Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about apps for NAS on mobile phones, iOS, Android devices. They're all pretty much filled with applications and today we're continuing looking at Synology. We did recently look at DS File, a very you know functional application for file and folder management on your NAS but a little low frills. It has to be said that the king of this sort of thing now from Synology is of course Drive. It is their kind of Swiss Army Knife application for handling a number of things on your NAS from uploads to downloads to shares to files all on there ready and available now it should be added that you do need a few things before proceeding on an app like this you have to make sure you've got Synology Drive already enabled on your NAS you also have to make sure that you've enabled things like team folders if you intend to use them and have made sure to put the data you're going to be utilizing in the drive folder of your NAS if you do want to access a number of the other directories on your NAS Although it is possible on Drive, it is advisable if doing that, that you should use DS file because Drive is a collaboration tool and ultimately designed for people that are working in teams to be able to all access the same drive as well as all the versioning and the backups that are all part of the big Drive experience. And as, you know, as marketing and as, you know, uh, pish as that all sounds, it has to be said that there's a lot of features and functionality available in Drive that just aren't available elsewhere. Outside of the mobile, you can, of course, pin files. You can go ahead and um, have shared files between different sources and localized cache with uh, file streaming on the fly. And it also brings that whole idea of versioning as well, where if you're dealing with files, it saves every change that's happened in the background. A lot of those changes need to all happen automatically with the app in the background. And if you have multiple, a whole NAS with its entire uh, file folder structure, I can imagine a number of those services are just not gonna work as well. So I kind of understand why uh, Synology's Drive platform has a certain pre-selected folder that everything has to go into in a directory, I should say, a shared directory. Uh, so I know, and some of you don't like that, but I, I kind of understand the reasoning for the sake of cohesion. But let's uh, log out of Drive because what we want to do is show you what this will be like if you are using it for the first time. Um, as you can see there, uh, this is the user interface you will see when installing the application. At the bottom, you've got the cog there where you can add another layer of security, if you like, with another passcode, as well as uh, checking out uh, trusted connections and making sure that you can still access it, access it from your device. Now, I'm using version 2.3.0, but it may well have been updated by the time you watch this video, so do make sure you're using the most recent version. You may have bits and bobs in it that I haven't even seen for today's review. Um, ultimately, I do quite like Drive. Uh, the one of my few criticisms that I have for it in the years that I've been using it for the last couple of years for the channel. One obviously is the lack of access to the wider array of files and folders on the device rather than the pre-selected folders. Uh, but another thing I'm not hugely keen on is uh, although it is able to open a number of different services rather than relying on you opening certain apps with the tools available in other apps, I will say that it still doesn't open all of them in the way that it promises. And I think there's a few things like using Synology's Office application. I think uh, their Office tools could well do to be ported over to a mobile form in a far more usable, friendly fashion, rather than still relying on you using some third-party tools, which doesn't really quite seem and sit well with the rhetoric of Synology. But other than that, I do think these platforms are, this app is particularly good. Now, we have the My Drive Moments folder there. Inside that folder, we have chucked a bunch of different things. We've got those photo albums up there, one of which I've um, starred in another app that does carry over between different applications. So we can go into that one there. And we've got photos there. Let's open up a photo right there straight away. And we can see a lot more um, about that. Again, the usual zooming in there. Very, very fast. Very, very quick thumbnail generation there. Flicking between them nice and quickly. Nice, quick app to be used, all and easy. I'll be honest with you, that never would have happened during the pandemic, would it? Uh, that was, uh, I think, the year before the pandemic there. Um, so carrying on, again, you can switch to the folder views there. You can get a bit more information. You can uh, find out more information about the photos that you are looking at. Um, so let's go for that one there. 
go in there, a bit more information about it there in the back. And if you were using the photo app, you would get a lot more information with regards to camera, ISO, uh, time of day, uh, geotagging, that sort of thing. But for that sort of stuff, you should really use these photo station moments or up and coming uh, Synology Photos mobile application coming very, very soon. Um, now, some of the file types that I've chosen to try to open up in this application, some open, some do not. Now, sometimes it's the fault of the file. So, for example, if we look at a PDF here. Open up that PDF. It's opening straight away. It's a PDF there for uh, the 1821 plus, their data sheet there. Same goes. We can open up a doc there straight away, opening up lovely and smooth, nice and quick. If we go for an Excel, um, sorry, an Excel spreadsheet, we load it up there. And a bang, we're into a spreadsheet there. Uh, WMV file there, that was a broken file in the defense of the application manager. An MP3 file, and I have disabled um, audio on this device because of the YouTube copyright bots. But as you can see there, it does appear and allows you to play it, but it doesn't, like, it's not on screen. It's still advisable for audio files in your Synology to either stream them over the network to your um, multimedia hardware or use DS Audio for that sort of thing. But we can go ahead, pause it, and get rid of it if we choose. Let's get rid of that file. So next, um, you've got a PPTX file there, but again, more of a limitation on my phone than it is on the app. As you can see there, it's more to do with the third-party app it's trying to open with. That's an example of what I mean, but it would be nice if the Synology Office app was ready and available there. Now, Pressing the plus series at the bottom there allows you to add files. So, so we create a folder here and we'll call this one test one. From there, we can go into test one, upload some files. We can take a picture. So let's take a picture of me. Go ahead and we can upload that file. And that is now going to upload that file directly into that folder there. It's just going to go ahead and upload it in. We can come out. It's going to do that there in the background. Next, you can do a recording. You can upload a manual file if you choose. So we can upload that file manually if we like, which is probably wildly unnecessary. So let's choose a different file. Let's go for that tree file that we downloaded earlier. It's going to do that there in the background. Go back. And then we can have a look at different elements. Now, that's kind of the shared drive there. Oh, we've got a fail to upload message there. Again, I think that's more to do with my network than the app because it was working prior to this and I have restarted my router in the background. So let's let's cut them a tiny bit of slack there, um, mainly because I've not given it the network access. Now, moving back, we can look at some of the options. We've got the team folder and we have sorted out a team folder there. We create a share on the team folder. And this is a different album on the NAS, but it has to be said, that adding team folders is not possible here on the app. And this is probably the other issue I have with it. There we go, you can see the network disconnected it for me there. Um, but th this is the other kind of small negative I have about this app, because I do like this app, and I know you guys might be thinking I'm going a bit easy on it. I'm not really, because I think there isn't enough file management apps for NAS that can rival uh, the user interface of Google Drive and uh, Dropbox and stuff like that. So I think you have to measure those things relative to those, uh, hence my outlook on these things. But one thing I don't like is the fact that you can't add things easily to these team folders. Now, you can go in and add something to the folders as they are. So call this one test two. And this allows me to add things to a test folder uh, a test folder to the team folder, but I can't add more folders to the team folder. If I wanted to add more directories here, I've got to log in on the desktop application and go through the directories on the system and add them manually there, which is a little bit disappointing if you want to edit this on the fly. And it's something I kind of wish I could do on the mobile app and not have to rely on a desktop client. Now, if you share items, so if we go back into the My Drive, let's share a folder, uh, a file. So let's share that file there. We'll create a share on it. Again, we can create whether you want it to be an internal or external link. You can also say if you want it to have um, a time limit. You can do all kinds of stuff there, but let's copy that link there because we've created that file. We'll make it a public link so it can be seen externally. And from there, you can also change if it has a password. Does it expire? Can they read? Can they read only? 
all that kind of options there. So if we go back into the shares option and there is our shared with others tab there at the top. Now, we've got the files there that we've shared for other users and we can edit those uh, the restrictions on those files quite, quite easily. So it's nice to be able to have that layer of control. Obviously, there's a difference between sharing with yourself and sharing with others. If other people are sharing files with you, they'll appear there. But obviously, sharing with others appears likewise there. Recent will obviously show the files that you have accessed recently. Starred are files that you've chosen to give priority to, which I already did in another video. Offline access is if you choose for a file or folder to be pinned locally or to be um, available on your device. So for example, if we go ahead with a file and we want this one to have localized access, we can download that file. But also make sure it has offline access you can pin that from within the application. And again, you can change and view some of the features and functionality there, but the ability to give it offline access is one that we've just did there, ticking it on the screen, allows you, if you're particularly if you're editing files, to edit a file locally and it will sync with the internet to allow the changes you make once you have an internet connection to be established. And again, that comes back to that versioning control. Now, a lot of the versioning you can't really play with on the mobile app. And that's probably my last criticism for the app. I like the ability of Drive to have versioning. So, for example, I might have edited this and, you know, cropped it, chopped bits off, that sort of thing. But the versioning where you can go back to a previous edit, <clears throat> you can't really do here on the mobile app. You can only really action those things on the desktop, which is a bit of a shame because I think the versioning control and the ability to revert a file to a previous state, such as a text document that you've changed in a way that you don't like, should really be available on the mobile application as well as the desktop versions. Background tasks, the stuff that you've done will appear there. And of course, Recycle Bin is enabled by uh, the options built into um, Synology Drive on the desktop. You can't change these, and adding or removing a Recycle Bin can't really be done on the mobile app. These are things that have to be done on the desktop client app. But I'm gonna wrap things up here. This has been my brief review of Synology Drive Mobile. I do think it's still a very, very good app. I think it has lots of features and functionality that they should really be proud of. But I do still think there's a little few extra little bits and bobs to be done for it to be just as good as the likes of DS Finder and more. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to learn more. I hope you're enjoying these videos. We've got a few more left to do and otherwise I will see you next time.